independence is a word he used. Mm -hmm. And we have to really figure out what they mean by interdependence. Because on the one hand, to inter means to bury. It's like international. Mm -hmm. yeah. Inter is to bury the nation. Ah, oh, okay, I see. You see? Yeah, yeah. Now, now interdependence uh, is to bury dependence, really is to bury independence. The, the opposition to interdependence hmm. is self-reliance. Huh. On an individual scale. Now, when, when Margaret Thatcher and other ones were kept using this term interdependence, mm. and George Bush Sr. and different ones, yeah. uh, it, it sounds like a pleasant, fuzzy word, so we, we just don't think about it. Mm. Yeah. But it will come right down to the same term way of ch that China is in. Hmm. Where if you eventually have your own water, if you have your own little garden to feed yourself, mm. you will be antisocial. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's what it means. You must be dependent on this system for all your needs of survival. Mm. That's what interdependence really means. Hmm. So, of course, this this connects, you know, with the, the um, as you said earlier, with with the nations, if if uh, they are able to set up China as this strong uh -huh. economic force now, and and basically everyone has to fall into that same model to be able to compete with China, I guess. Yes. Yeah. And this is this connects with the the. Uh, WTO and the, even the UN also, of course. Mm -hmm. hmm. And yet, I, I said years ago, I, were, I was telling people, before the European Union even occurred, I said they're going to merge us all, they're doing it now. Mm -hmm. yeah. And they kept using terms like, well, the Prime Minister's off to meet other Prime Ministers to, to create closer ties. Mm -hmm. and that's how they always couched it, you see. Yeah. And... Uh, So, so they use the specific terminology which they never explain to the public. <laughs> uh, closer ties is, is, are, are legal ties. Mm. And what they're doing the same with uh, the Americas at the moment. They've actually done it. They signed the first part of the exoteric, the open agreement, <laughs> uh, back in March uh, of 2005. Mm. And by 2010, the Americas have to be amalgamated with a new uh, governing parliament. Yeah, like yeah. Group. Yeah, exactly. And Karl Marx wrote about it in the 1800s. The United Europe, uh, the United Pacific Rim region, mm. and the United Americas. Yeah. And he wasn't using a crystal ball. <laughs> <laughs> he, knew what, he knew what was going on there. <laughs> he knew it because he was paid by the big bankers to write his communist manifesto. Yeah, yeah. Um, and um, do, you, do you know if, if there are any place in, in the manifesto that that suggest that, um, I mean, that Mexico or the, or the population of Mexico should uh, basically invade the, the, the U.S.? Uh, well, he knew the same as, as Jack Attali knew, um, that there would be great upheavals, great mm -hmm. upheavals that hadn't been seen mm -hmm. since the, the, the Goths and Visigoths came into Rome. Yeah, yeah. In Rome's last days, mm -hmm. uh, there'd be upheavals with, with mass populations on the move. And sure enough, uh, um, he was well aware that that could be made to happen. Mm. And the reason he was sure of it is because these boys have archives to go to see mm. for, for, for history, real history. Uh, we get public libraries. Archives is where the formulas for how to motivate populations, mm. uh, how to move them, how to make them think and do things, That's where all these formulas are kept. Yeah. These are ancient sciences of manipulation, hmm. which were well understood uh, in the days of Egypt. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so yeah, uh, uh, these um, these guys didn't have crystal balls. They simply knew that to, what to the ordinary person would seem impossible. They knew the formulas and how to make it happen. Yeah, and, and the easiest way to make it happen also, I guess, then is to implant it as a philosophy or, or political movement to actually have people, you know, devoted to to it. Yes, what we've found as well is that the big, see, the big um, back in the 50s, uh, there was a um, the, the Reeves Commission was set up in the United States to to look into the big foundations like the Carnegie, the Ford, mm. and uh, the Rockefeller Foundation, yeah. to see what, what they were really using all these multi-million dollar funds for. And Norman Dodds was sent from the Senate to, to investigate. And at the 
Ford Foundation, he was told by this American foundation that their job was to set up a structure so that the Soviet system could be quite quietly, happily merged with the United States system. <laughs> there we go. So we're working at that then. However, the same foundations, primarily the Rockefeller Foundation, is, is, is funding the migrations and the propaganda down in Mexico and beyond yeah. to get the people to move. <laughs> so they're causing the influx. Yeah. And out of this will come the solution. Um, it's the old story, it's thesis, the antithesis, and the synthesis. This is what they're after. Mm, yeah. They want the synthesis. Out of, out of the, the action, you'll get the retaliation by the citizenry, and then you'll have the, the laws and legal systems for the solution, and that's exactly what they want, because the solution must knock down the last vestiges of, of the American uh, Bill of Rights. Hmm. And and the uh, the, the recent uh, what, what is it called the, tr the transatlantic corridor, right? It also yeah. connects with this, I guess. Well, you know, there's, there's more going on that they never tell you about. Once in a while they do, but they won't remind you that they've told you, and we forget. <laughs> yeah. There's more under the ground than there is over it. Hmm. Um, about six, you know, six or seven years ago, in one of the British newspapers. It came out that um, a big corporation with RAND involved, the RAND Corporation, yeah. uh, had began a boring project to make a tunnel, under, just like a transatlantic type tunnel, a, a tunnel underneath the Bering Straits from Pigeon Lake in, in British Columbia, Canada, hmm. that would come up inside Russia. Huh. And it was begun back then. They said it, it would be completed in five years. Okay. <laughs> we haven't heard any more about it. Huh. And yet these boring machines that Rand Corporation has mm. can go through all kinds of rockets five miles per hour, day and night, and literally fuse the, the tunnel walls behind them with the heat generated. <laughs> uh, so yeah, what we're given as news is trivia. <laughs> yeah, I really. see. I see. Yeah, it's something to be occupied with while the while the real game is going on behind the curtains, I guess. Yes. <laughs> yeah, Alan. He also knew too, which is of real importance, is that during a massive change of culture mm -hmm. and tradition to a, a new phase, you must introduce a religion to match it. Ah. And that's why, in as early as the 1800s, they brought out what. That which should become the, the the new age religion. And and, and Alan, that that's I, I want to. I, I think we should finish up this segment now, and, and we're, I really want to dig into the new age uh, movement and so forth in the next part. But in the last few uh, minutes here, about two we got left. Uh, please tell tell us how to you know support your work and and get your DVDs and so forth and about your site. Yes, <coughs> if you look up uh, cuttingthroughthematrix.com, you you'll. You can download as much as you want for free, and for those things which are on sale, they keep the, the site alive, they keep me alive, mm, yeah. and I can continue churning stuff out. I've got a lot more to, to tell the people, mm. and um, I could expand the site and possibly even get my own show on the go, Yeah. Uh, because we're, we're running short of time. We are the last thinking sentient generation, because the next ones will not even have the ability to think. Hmm. And I'm not kidding. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. So support, uh, support Alan's work, and, and head on over to cuttingthroughthematrix.com. Alan and I will continue our discussion in the subscribers section, and we're uh, working to get all things in place over at redicecreations.com. So these subscriber interviews will be available very soon. And uh, next Thursday on Red Ice Radio, we got Martin Dutre on the show for an interview on ancient Celtic New Zealand. So uh, stay tuned for that one. And uh, thanks to everyone out there for listening and uh, being part of the show. And uh, also a big thanks to Fredrik Pangren behind the controls for making this online talk radio show a possibility. We'll uh, talk more on Thursday. This is Henrik Pangren. Take care and take it easy.